Hi there. I have been very, very much inspired by the fact that our dear Queen has had on her coffin a series of beautiful wreaths made with flowers from her own gardens. And in amongst all the pomp and circumstance, there is this simple circle of flowers which have been grown near her, for her, with her. I'm not sure at 96 how much time she spent pricking out and putting on, but nevertheless, they are flowers from her own gardens. And it seems to me that she has clearly had a great deal of um, input into the process that we're all going through with the end of her life and her funeral on Monday. It is now Friday. And one of those things that she must have influenced is the fact that she would like her own garden flowers on her coffin. So I thought I would make a funeral wreath because I think what she's given her gardeners, who will have been the people probably cutting the flowers and possibly making the wreaths, by asking for garden flowers, she's given them an opportunity to stand back from all the hubble and bubble and noise and and just to walk around the gardens to find the best flowers available at the time to put them in a bucket of water overnight to have a little drink and to make something very beautiful there's something about a circle of course it's a circle of life circles are very pretty um they're attractive they have no beginning and no end and so that's one of the reasons I think people have wreaths. Um, but also, in order to make a wreath, you sort of knit it. There's a great deal of good, small uh, motion. It's very good for your mental health, making something out of what grows in the garden. Anyway, so I thought I'd come up here and I'll cut some bits and pieces and I'm going to start with this poplar because that's going to be my base and I'm going to get some moss and then I've got some leftovers from another job I've been doing so let's make a funeral wreath and then if in life you have an opportunity to make a funeral wreath I promise you it will be a lovely thing to do I promise you <laughs> okay I'm going to go and get some I'm having start with the poplar then I've got to get some moss. Now it's really worth remembering that if you're making a funeral wreath, you only need make it that morning. It need only last that day. So you don't have to obsess about water containers. <laughs> what is a good idea is to cut your material the night before and let it have a nice drink in water so that when it goes into the wreath, it's turgid each stem is turgid, the water is up to its neck. I haven't got just white flowers because no two gardens are the same, um, but I have gone for pale colours. Uh, white obviously is for mourning, is a, traditionally for mourning. Um, so I've got a lot of white, but I've got these lovely Jude the Obscure roses and the aster is a tiny little bit blue um, I've got some white fever few daisies. I love a bit of daisy action. And more daisies. I've got some rather hammered by the weather looking cosmos. But I'm going to cut out anything that's not perfect. If you look at the Queen's wreaths, she's had a selection of different things on hers. Um, she's got sweet peas on hers. Uh, my sweet peas are long gone. Hers have come from Balmoral, which is several hundred miles further north from me. Um, she's got white dahlias with yellow middles, single dahlias. I don't have white single dahlias with yellow middles, but I do have cosmos. So they're going to do a similar sort of job in the mix. I've also cut myself some variegated corners, which I love because it's really interesting as part of the combination. I've got some lovely sort of aging, gently um, hydrangea, limelight hydrangeas. Um, and I realise I have no 
rosemary and of course rosemary is for remembrance so i must pop outside and get some rosemary before i go any further right i'm back we'll see by the clock that actually i've been away having lunch fabrizio turned up and um with sandwiches and cake so who was i to turn them down right i'm going to make a little circle out of the twigs and then i'm going to moss them now if you want to know the it, minute details of how to make moss wreaths, autumn wreaths, Christmas wreaths. You can always book a place on my online demos and workshops. Look at the website, please. Lots of fun things coming up through the autumn that you might like to learn to do. Um, I'm going to make this circle and then moss it and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's put together. And a funeral wreath or a wreath for any special occasion be something you think about doing for yourself maybe i think this wreath could be this month's 30 stem challenge what do you think so i've twisted the poplar into a little circle this is i'm making a hundred percent biodegradable wreath because if you're going to go for homegrown flowers in your garden from your garden you may as well go for a hundred percent biodegradable no wire no copper rings no floral foam no just twigs and a bit of raffia <laughs> and some moss anyway there's your base um it's quite you i keep these around i have uh bases all over the place which are very useful um although a new one is quite nice because it's got a sort of life force to it it's got a spring to it anyway i like that that's a start you know, you could make one of these and just hang it on your door all year round. Funeral or no funeral, just have it. I think that's very attractive. Anyway, I, sorry, I'm banging on. I love wreathing. <laughs> anyway, there's the beginning. I'm going to moss it, um, tie some moss on. Now, my moss comes straight out of my garden and I just go and pick it up from the paths where I let it grow. Um, and it goes on like this. Just I just lay it onto my wreath. And I tie it on. I need to make it so you can see what I'm doing, but I probably, if you come on one of my demos, I do make it. I'm just in a rush doing this. It's a bit like making a bird's nest. <laughs> it's sweet. Anyway, I tie the bits on now and then I'll show you. Right, and there it is. I've just tied the moss on. Very simple. It's not a perfect circle, but life is not perfect. It doesn't matter because when I've added all the material, it will circle itself up, if you like. But that's a nice, good, strong base to make, to make now start dressing. With my foliage, <laughs> as always, I always green everything. I love it, I'm having to get out of there. So I always have to, I always green everything up first. But the nice thing about making a moss base is that there is no wire here. So I don't have to cover up any of my workings. And it means that you can use less material and make a lighter look. Sometimes, obviously not the queens, but sometimes wreaths can be very, very heavy. Um, and this way you don't have to make such a heavy kind of wreath. Um, it can be a lighter look, which I think is much prettier. Anyway, I'm gonna green it up first as any of you who watch all my other clips will know I was green everything up first. So here it is, nice and green. Um, it has got ivy flowers just coming to flower, brachyglottis, uh, variegated cornus, cineraria, and box, a little bit of box in it. And I haven't put the, the rosemary in yet. I'm going to put it in at the end so you see it. So it's nice green, that could be a start. <laughs> there you are. You could leave it like that if you liked. Personally, I love it when it's just green. Um, but I'm now gonna put some hydrangeas in it. Let's make it so that it's not grand enough for the queen, but the queen is not grand, is she? Her wreath is just cut out of her garden. So that's the antithesis of grand, but the perfection of beauty. Anyway, uh, let's, I'm going to add some uh, hydrangeas and other bits and then I'll show you when I've finished. And it, you can see it's not rocket science. There's the back and there's the front. Simple. 
I'll show you when it's finished. And here it is with hydrangeas. And again, you could stop here quite happily. It's just a very, very simple circle of twigs wrapped in moss. And it's moss is very forgiving. So you can stick your material into it and it'll hold really nicely. I mean, look, this is good and solid. But let's give it some roses and let's give it some daisies and let's give it the shapes that the queen has. But that's a good base. I, it, I, it is not possibly not unlike what is on the, on the coffin. And here it is with daisies. Very, very simple, dinky. Very, very simple and light. Isn't that pretty? Right, that's the whole thing. So you could stop there. I'm gonna carry on because I've got more stuff. Why not? Now I'm really having some fun. I've added the, what's left of the Swan Neck Veronicas and they are giving me a great deal more width. Can you see, there they are. Um, and I know they're a little brown, look, they're going over, but surely for a funeral, the end of the season is perfect. That feeling of things coming to an end and dying down and finishing, as well as being very beautiful, surely is a good thing. And now I've added some roses. I could have had dahlias, I could have had all sorts of things, but I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to stop <laughs> because, you know, enough is enough is enough. Have a look at the Queen's wreaths on the telly and in the photographs that you see. And they are all from her garden like this, which is fresh from the garden. The only thing that I haven't added yet is the rosemary. So I'm going to put it down um, and I'm gonna see if I can make it so that you can see me. So I'm going to put all the, ro <laughs> hello. I'm gonna put all the rosemary in in one place because it's very light and I don't want it to disappear. So it's going to be like um, the new queen consorts. Uh, she always wears feathers in her, in her hats. Um, fascinators. So I'm going to just have them all together and they're going to come out quite far so that you see them. It's getting to a stage where the wreath is so full it's quite hard to find space to add any material. There we are. And so the The, the rosemary for remembrance is all going in with one flourish. So inspired rather by the, the Queen's um, gar archers in Scotland have um, eagle feathers in their caps. And the new Queen consort wears feathers in her hat. This rosemary for remembrance is has a sort of flourish like that. And there, my friends, is a fresh from the garden wreath, which you could use it for a funeral or a dinner or a wedding or anything you like. But that's rather inspired by our dear queen, who I think has done an enormous good thing for the environment by encouraging people from now on to be like her and have flowers from the garden on their coffins. No imports, no plastic, 100% biodegradable, a natural mot, a still life of perfection, which is entirely ready for the compost heap. Right, if any of the tips and trips along here have been useful, please buy me a coffee. The link for coffee buying is in the blurb to all my clips. And please do follow the channel, subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And I'm going to take some lovely photographs of this to add to my clip. And hopefully 
I'll inspire you all. This is probably rather more than a 30 stem challenge, but why don't you have a go? Cut some twigs from the garden, make a circle, pick up some of that moss from behind the compost heap, tie it on and see if you can make a wreath. The skill is to have all of this material overnight in water so that it's right up to its neck in water before you put it into the moss. And this will not last forever. This is like, this is ephemeral art. This will go the way of all things, but it would certainly last long enough to be used for a funeral uh, because normally we don't all lie in state for several days. We are just buried. So if you wanted to make one of these for a funeral, you could make it the morning of the funeral and it is a very calm and lovely thing to do on the day of a funeral and it will sit very happily on a coffin. So perhaps be inspired. And in the meantime, perhaps make one and hang it on your door. There you are. Have a lovely day, everybody. And I will see you very soon. So sadly, I can't make it to London to file past the Queen's coffin with lots of other people I know who are queuing faithfully overnight uh, to pay their respects. But we do have a flagpole by our village church. This is one of two village churches we have. This is St John's across the road from us. And so I have brought my, my wreath and put it by the flagpole where the flag is still at half mast until next week.